We're listening to The Huddle with Dave Wyman, Michael Bumpus, and Stacey Ross. Joining us right now, linebacker Travis Gibson. Hey, Travis. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good. Happy. I mean, you guys are 3-0 and to start the season, and we're getting ready to uh, to watch a huge primetime matchup. How excited are you to uh, head to Detroit here? Man, very excited. Um, I played Detroit in my career, and mm -hmm. it's an outstanding fan base, outstanding stadium. And, I mean, what better way on All Monday right. night? Does that still matter to, to players that it's a big deal? Because you kind of know everybody. It used to be just Monday Night Football, but, you know, you knew everybody in the league was watching you. Oh, Does yeah. that still, still resonate with you? Yes, sir. Yes, it's a great opportunity, man. Not only to prove to everybody what you can do, but, you know, just to show the game what you can do. It's, um, it's a... Uh, you know, for lack of words, man, like I just said, it's a it's a great opportunity. When did you make uh, the transition to defense? Uh, because it's a it's a certain mentality, especially to play the position that you play, right? Super physical. I would assume at some point in your career, maybe youth football, you were on the offensive side of the ball as well. When did you say, all right, this is this is my groove right here. This is what I'm doing. You know, um, I think it, I think the turning point was middle school. I was at wide receiver, and I uh, I got targeted a good amount throughout the game, and I just couldn't seem to catch the ball. <laughs> and it, yeah, it killed me, man. And I said, you know, uh, I'm gonna flip the page here, and I'm gonna just go tackle the ball instead. And ever since then, it's been it's been history, man. See, so, yeah. you know, that's surprising because sometimes when we talk to guys and bump, you know, this like if if we've talked to someone that's like, yeah, I used to be tight end or I used to be a wide receiver, I always want to be like. You think you could play now? Like, you think you could catch an NFL pass now? <laughs> nah. I take it you'd be like, no. <laughs> no, nah, I'd probably sub myself out. <laughs> what if you get an interception? That counts. It counts. That's an NFL catch, kind of. Yeah, it does I'm, I'm going to call that for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call that for you. I'm gonna, I'll I'm take gonna, it. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the conversations that um, that we had, we had it a little bit, actually, during the break with, with Wyman, who, who played – linebacker, um, obviously in a different era, and we've talked about how much it's changed. Um, you obviously have only played in your time, but I'm, sh I'm assuming you grew up watching football and you know some of the greats. Where do you feel like linebackers change the most? Man, it's, uh, <laughs> it's so much to, I guess you could say, it's so much to speak about on that topic. Like you said, uh, linebackers used to be heavier. They used to be more downhill and you know we still have that nowadays mm -hmm. but you know now you're looking for more speed being able to run sideline to sideline being able to run with the Tyreek Hills and the Amora St. Browns of the game and um I would say that's that's been the biggest change to me once all the start once the defensive calls and the targeting start coming in then you could see that uh you know everything changed it wasn't just the calls and the penalties it was more the players and you know, it's less risky when you have a 300-pound guy, or I guess you could say more risky having a 300-pound guy tackling a quarterback, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the targeting and situations like that, so. And you're supposed to freeze in midair and not not land on them, even though gravity. <laughs> Man, <laughs> look, look, hey, that can be, <laughs> that can I be won't a get rough road, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, you got 11 sacks in your in your career. Um, what's, what's your favorite, like when you, Think about a game. I used to kind of dream about making big plays. What would be your your favorite big play? Uh, it would actually have to be against Detroit. Against Detroit, um, it was Thanksgiving, my second year. Uh, I was alongside Robert Quinn. He got the sack, held the quarterback up. Um, I got a holding call on Panay Sewell and got back up, forced the fumble, and nice. recovered it. It was a, probably the greatest play of mine to this day. It's all for about me, the ball. For me, yeah. yeah. It's all about the ball. You're correct. Man, you guys, um, this defense always seems like you guys are moving together, man. Like, the gap integrity is on point. The intensity is on point. Uh, what, are, what are your walkthroughs like? Because I, I think people sleep on walkthroughs, or maybe they don't know about them, but there's a lot that gets done because you're communicating with your guys. Okay, if we see this, then that. Um, what, what are your walkthroughs like with this defense? Man, our walkthroughs are intense. You know, it's um, we treat them like game reps. We uh, overly communicate. We make sure we're taking the right detail steps, the right detail technique. You know, we don't, I don't think here we let those things slip through the cracks. And that's, uh, that can be a common thing. You know, people, like you said, can take it as a lackadaisical practice or, you know, just brush it off. But those things add up over the season. And obviously when you get exposed, then it comes to, well, what did we do wrong? Right. And then if you can look back at the walkthrough and say, well, we let this slide by, we let this slide by, then it adds up. 
Um, I know that um, you don't always get like day-to-day -day interaction with a head coach, right? You're mostly with your position coaches and then obviously your teammates. But that being said, what's your impression of Mike McDonald? Is he tough? Is he funny? Is he, I mean, tell us a bit about him. I would say both. I would say <laughs> okay. both if I'm being honest, man. He's a great guy. Uh, he always is laughing and enjoying his time with the players, but you can tell once he picks up the playbook mm -hmm. and it's time for us to practice, you know, he's zoned in, locked in. So that's something you appreciate as a player. Travis, uh, I, I remember one of your first your first press conference here. You said something about it's not all candy and nuts yeah. was, was your quote. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, that's, that's the thing about this game, right? It's overcoming adversity. I felt like that was the biggest lesson I learned because, you know, later in life it's like, nothing was as as you know critical you know it didn't seem because you you're constantly overcoming that yeah kind of just tell us a little bit about where that came from from your your background man i would just say it's life you know um in my history you know i did only have one division one offer i was undersized you know a lot of people overlooked me um ended up being able to go to the combine didn't wasn't able to run you know pulled hamstring whatever the case may be but you know, I think in um, I think in this career, man, this if you don't stick and you don't keep your head down and stay working, you know, it's gonna weed you out. You'll be you'll yeah. be out really quick. But um, you know, I feel like with that attitude and uh, you know coming to work every day, being prepared, and you know just not taking anything for granted, I feel like that can help keep you on the right track as far as overcoming anything, regardless. All right, well, the three of us are going to continue our preview for Monday Night Football. You have to actually get ready to play it. So we're going to let you go, <laughs> Travis. Thank you so much for joining us. You guys are listening to The Huddle. Yes, ma'am.